All right, in this video, we're going to talk about SN2 reactions. SN2 stands for substitution nucleophilic bimolecular. A substitution refers to the fact that during this reaction, one group is going to be substituted for another. Nucleophilic means that a nucleophile is going to be involved during the reaction. Bimolecular is referring to the kinetics of the reaction. In this case, this reaction is second order with respect to its rate law. So let's take a look at an example. We've got one right here where we've got I minus. It's got a negative charge, so that's our nucleophile. We've got our electrophile right here, our alkyl halide. And in SN2 reactions, our nucleophile is going to attack our electrophile. And actually, at the same time that our nucleophile is making its attack, the leaving group is going to leave. So because these two steps are happening at the same time, we say that the reaction mechanism is one concerted step. Everything is happening at the same time. The instant the nucleophile attacks, the leaving group is taking off. Another thing we want to take note about the mechanism of this reaction is that the direction that the nucleophile is entering to attack our alkyl halide is the opposite direction that our leaving group is leaving. And this is what we call a backside attack. All right. So even though this reaction takes place in one step, we can take a look at the details of the mechanism by looking at the transition state. So let's go ahead and draw the transition state right here. Remember, the transition state is not an actual molecule. It's not like it's you know, taking place in two steps. It's just showing what is that high energy transient state during this one step reaction. So we can go ahead and draw this out. And you can see here our transition state, which we denote with the double dagger symbol on the top right within our brackets. What's interesting about this transition state is you can actually see the central carbon is connected with five different groups. Right now, it's true that this bond is in the middle of breaking and this bond is in the middle of forming, but this transition state does have an atom associated with five substituents. As a result, it has a special name. This transition state is called the pentameric transition state. And what's helpful about this diagram is you can kind of see what's happening during the reaction. That at first, this bromine is facing the right, and the deuterium, hydrogen, and methyl group, they're oriented on the left. But the instant the iodine comes in to make its nucleophilic attack, these three groups basically get flattened vertically. And as, they make, uh, as the, the iodine makes its attack and pushes away the bromine, the three groups then get pushed to the right side of the molecule. So in many ways, you can think of this almost like an umbrella, you know, when it's really, you know, when the weather is really bad and the wind is very strong, your umbrella is facing one direction, but then you have a gust of wind and it inverts your umbrella. That's essentially what's going on here with the SN2 reaction. In fact, if you take a look at the absolute configuration of our starting alkyl halide, you notice that it has an absolute configuration of R. But when you look at the absolute configuration of your product, you're going to see that its absolute configuration is now S. This change in the absolute configuration from R to S is what we call inversion of configuration. So that you can also expect from the SN2 reaction. All right, so now that we've talked about SN2, let's summarize a few key points of this reaction over here. And later when we look at SN1, you can look at how it differs. So for the rate law, we know from general chemistry that the rate law is always gonna start with K, the rate constant, and then it's gonna be multiplied by the concentration of the reactants that are involved with determining the reaction rate. 
In this case, it's going to involve both the nucleophile as well as the electrophile. And the reason why is because if you have more nucleophile, then you're going to have more nucleophiles to be able to attack. So it's going to initiate more reactions. Similarly, if you have more electrophiles, you have more targets to be attacked. So therefore, that's also going to increase the reaction rate. So this is why we call it SN2, because it's a bimolecular reaction. It's second order. Next, we can consider the mechanism. The mechanism, we made a couple points that, first of all, everything occurs in one step. So it is one considered step. And the other point we made is that you have a backside attack. Now, with the stereochemistry, we said that you have inversion of configuration. This applies, of course, only if your starting molecule is chiral. If your molecule is in chiral and doesn't have absolute configuration, then it doesn't matter what your product is going to be. It's not going to be chiral either. But if you start with S, your product will be R. If you start with R, your product will be S. For reactivity of alkyl halides, this is actually something we haven't addressed yet, but this is considering the alkyl halide, the electrophile, that here the bromine is attached to a carbon that is a primary carbon. It's a primary carbon because it's only attached to one other carbon. But you can consider other types of alkyl halides. For instance, you could have a methyl alkyl halide where the halogen is attached to a carbon that is not connected to any other carbons. You can also consider, for instance, a primary, secondary, and tertiary alkyl halides. And now we want to compare the reactivities, how fast each of these reactions proceed with SN2. And as it turns out, the fewer the substituents, the faster the reaction is going to be for SN2. And the reason why is because in order for SN2 to occur, our nucleophile needs to be able to make its attack onto the carbon. And if you have one methyl group, it's not too bad, but if you have three other methyl groups coming off that carbon then you, that you need to attack, then you have a lot of steric hindrance. It's very tough for our nucleophile to get in there to make its attack. So, as it turns out, uh, SN2 reactions don't actually even occur with tertiary substrates. If you have a tertiary substrate, there's actually too much steric hindrance that SN2 reactions can't even occur. So it's mostly for methyl substrates and primary substrates, and it can occur for secondary substrates, but at a slower rate. All right. Now for nucleophile, we didn't talk about this too much either, but for nucleophiles, you'll notice here that we have a full negative charge. If your nucleophile has a full negative charge, that means it's a strong nucleophile. And that's generally what we want in SN2 reactions because we want our nucleophile to attack directly. So we want it to have a full negative charge. For the solvent, we didn't discuss this either, but there's a couple types of solvents we want to consider. Polar protic solvents and polar aprotic solvents. The difference between these two is the ability to hydrogen bond. Polar protic solvents are solvents that can hydrogen bond like water. Polar aprotic solvents are solvents that cannot hydrogen bond. So a good example is DMSO. It's polar, but it just can't form hydrogen bonds. And in this case, for SN2 reactions, you actually want the polar aprotic solvent. The reason why you don't want the polar protic solvent is because the polar protic solvent is going to form hydrogen bonds with your nucleophile. And if it forms hydrogen bonds with your nucleophile, it's weakening the strength of your nucleophile, which we've already discussed we don't want because we want a strong nucleophile.